Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This match is going to be on Virtual Plaza between Cron Aberrant and Gadget. And I do not know the last time we saw this map. Actually, I don't think we've ever seen this map. This is actually a bit of a joke. Honestly, I made this map because I felt challenged to make the smallest map possible. Smaller than Iced, which I've gone on record saying I really didn't like the size or shape of that map because it was flat and very small. But figured I'd show I can make a tiny map, and I did. This is Virtual Plaza. I don't even... I can just zoom out, really. So we have Northeast. Go out here. Northeast, we have Cryamarin's base here. Southwest, we have Gadget's base. And then as you see in the Northwest and Southeast, more expansions. And the center as well has some resources. And the entire thing is 96 by 96. This is the smallest Akron multiplayer map. I'm not sure what possessed these players to, try, to use it. It is a stock map, but it's very small. It's also one of the few maps with water on it, but it's very small and kind of neat, but very small. Anyway, Crimer and Gadget sending out the Acron to scout. Gadget's Acron being very quickly spotted by Crimer's forces. Crimer going very quickly for an all-in attack. Not surprising given the size of the map. Gadget, on the other hand, not accounting for the size of the map. He is building a couple RPs. He should be building a depot immediately. He should have built an RP on QP, an RP on LC, and immediately started out with a depot. But he did not, and that is probably not going to work out for him. Cronavert, on the other hand, is going forward with an all-in attack. Five Octo, Seppi, Faro probably will start building more units near Gadget's base, but Cronavert basically just has the one LC RP that he started with, and that's it. That's all he's using. Otherwise, going for an all-in attack. Gadget, building up some infantry, really I don't think the best move. Granted, given the size of the map and the fact that there are more Octos, Zion Pulsers may also have been a bad move. So the infantry could actually work, come to think of it. Might not be a terrible idea. Possibly as a way of transitioning out of it, though, even then I still would put... No. Nah. No, given that, maybe I, I would say that Gadget's not got a bad idea with this. The opening depot might actually not work in this case, come to think of it. Regardless, it really doesn't matter because they are, the Octos are coming now. This is the 118 mark. that is coming in. Dealing, the one trying to kill the Akron, not able to deal enough damage to it. Some of the infantry dying. Another one attacks the Akron and more Zion Veers. The only ones left. Two Zion Veers left, but Gadget, back at this point of view, able to block all these Octos well enough with his Zion Veer and get around to the Akron. Continuing to pump out Zion Veer you know, actually, this isn't a bad idea. Come to think of it, given the size of the map. Okay, Gadget is clearly much more knowledgeable about how to use infantry than I am. I've long since lost faith in the usefulness of infantry, but that clearly is a mistake because Gadget is doing quite well building up lots of infantry to defend against this force coming in. Granted, infantry are not bad at defense. They're just bad when they need to move because they can't, basically. However, the autos are coming in dealing with those infantry, and Kron Aberrant moving his Akron into position. I don't know why Kron Aberrant moves his Akron forward. Is he trying to make himself lose the game? I mean, if this, if his attack fails, these Zion Veer are nicely in position to start being built up, to start attacking his own Akron and finishing him off. I mean, he's lost everything. This is really an all-in attack. He has to win this attack in order to win. I'm a bit surprised he isn't focusing entirely on the Akron. I mean, getting rid of the support forces isn't a bad idea, but that Akron really is his primary target. Now, he is going more for the Zion Veers this time around, and the Zion Veers are dying. One of the Test Veers staying alive, but the Test Veer, of course, is not really an anti-ground unit. It's an anti-air unit. So, Kron Aberrant continuing to try to re-micro this battle. More Octos this time around. The Octos able to get rid of the Test Veer first, but the Zion Veer are out of the way. Gadget successfully moving them in a position where they can deal with the Octos without dying themselves. The Faro still alive, but enough Zion Veers able to take care of all these forces, and I think Kron Aberrant has lost the game. Kron Aberrant realizing he's lost the game as well, and... He might be going for another re-micro attempt. This is his point of view, but Gadget moving all the way behind that annex so he keeps all the Zion Veer alive as long as possible. And that is game. Gadget is going to be able to survive this, get rid of all these objects, get rid of the Faro, and then get rid of the Akron. I do not know why Kronar moves his Akron so far forward. I mean, I get this an all-in, but really... that was kind of silly. However, no, Kronar actually moving away, giving up the all-in, but his Akron really at risk. I don't know why Why did he move it ahead? Move it out of the way. It's getting heavily damaged. Getting out of half health. Getting out of half health before managing to escape. 
bit of a silly move there, but still managing to get out of there. Gadget building more infantry, converting LC to QP, sorry, QP to LC, and getting an additional couple of Zion Veer. And that is not the game. I'm very surprised. That is not the game. There's still more game left. And Crime Rate building up more Octos. Actually, no, building up Faros. A Faro and an Octo. Not just building up Octos, so. Trying to get himself in a better position to do an Akron snipe. While Gadget moves ahead, wisely not keeping his Akron with us. Well. Wisely not keeping his Akron with the attacking force, getting it near his opponent's forces. I mean, I can kind of see why Crime Rate moves his Akron forward, sort of? Maybe? I mean, because he doesn't want to allow an attack going along the side, just escaping out of the base and attacking his Akron. He can't go back and protect it. But it's still right there. It can be easily sniped. And it's hard to tell which way to go, honestly. Against Grekum, it might be a better idea to keep it forward. Against Vekir, not sure if it matters. The infantry are slow enough that it probably doesn't. Anyway, the Zion Veer are in game position. And Gadget... Also throwing his, his Akron so far forward, I don't know why Kramer... There we go, Kramer is starting to move back to attack it, but isn't. And Gadget losing a bunch of his forces, losing enough of Zion Veer that he actually is not able to deal with these Faros. And these Faros have beaten him out. The two Faros definitely enough to get rid of the Zion Veer. Gadget really should move some of these back, but I don't think he has the current... He does not have the current energy to do so. He cannot save them. Getting more Zion Veer with the money he did manage to get with the extra RP. Kramer having no extra RPs of his own. That really doesn't help, but... Gadget still, he's taking a lot of damage. The Faros are not, well, no, one of the Faros is trying to move back. Looks like he's trying to go for an Akron snipe or a resource processor snipe, but it's not going to be enough. And it is going for the Annex, but not the Zion Veer that's attacking it. So Kron Aberrant losing all of his forces again, and this time permanently losing his forces. Gadget also losing his forces, but he has more money coming in. So I think Gadget will be able to grind out a victory. Definitely a very fast opener, but on the other hand, if... Crownhammer is able to get rid of the Akron before Gadget gets up another Zion Veer or two. That's two. I, actually, no, I think, I think Gadget may have lost this with... Because Crownhammer is able to get rid of this Akron with the remaining forces he has before Zion Veer able to defend it. And that is going to be game. Gadget loses his Akron, or will be about to lose his Akron. He jumped back about 30 seconds. Or, no, not back. Forward. I think. No, he did jump back. Never mind. But he is moving his Akron out of the way. Still, that is... Well, let's see. The Akron is getting... is escaping. And the blue time of coming along, so Gadget has successfully not died. But he's still in a tricky position. Getting more Zion Beer, but now losing more his resources. Getting his RPs damaged. And one of his RPs is going to be destroyed. Second RP might also die too, but the Zion Beer should be out in time to start protecting it. However, the Zion Beer itself will not live... One of the, the Octo getting down to have health. Is another Zion Veer coming? No, it's not Veer to be coming. Gadget could afford it, but still not quite. Crownhammer, however, not spending any money. He has enough to rebuild. He could actually build up another Faro right here. If he does so, he's won. But as it is, I think he's won. Yeah, Gadget is surrendering, losing his two RPs, and that is the game. That lasted longer than I thought. But certainly, well, that's the sort of game that Virtual Plaza would produce very, very tight matches. Extremely micro-heavy, extremely technical, no macro management whatsoever, and very quick, decisive endings. That, that's exactly what we saw. I just want to see how it played out, because I, I don't think I've seen Virtual Plaza played out. Maybe once, but certainly not in the most recent economy setup and everything. I mean, it's going to be shown from the design of the map. It was not designed after Cold... It was designed well before Cold Forged. It was designed actually well before a lot of things. A lot of economy changes that happened. And clearly it shows, but it still works, I suppose. It's just a very bizarre map. Uh, that is the game. I'm not sure why Gadget hasn't just thrown in the towel. Oh, Gadget has thrown in the towel. He did say GG. But he hasn't actually officially surrendered yet. Not sure why. Okay, it looks like Gadget is in fact going for one last bit of scouting, but 
No, he surrenders. Okay, Gadget has surrendered. That is the game. And we'll have another quite shortly. Hopefully a longer game than that one, but we will see. Because... Okay, it's gonna be a longer game than that one. You can't possibly have much shorter of a game than what we saw there. Alright, so stay tuned. I'll be back in just a minute.